How's it going, folks? I'm Matthew. This is Lamar's Cards, and today we're taking a look at eight really, really cool CDH decks that I have not got to cover. This is a series I've done off and on. Some months it's harder to find stuff, but these are eight decks in really since Invitational that have popped off, got top 16 at larger tournaments that I haven't got to cover. Been really busy, a whole lot of nonsense going on the past month. Most of y'all know that. And uh, also, I just don't get to cover every event. There's tons of events firing. Hard to get to take a look at all of them. But I found eight really cool lists from different events that I think you guys are really gonna like. There's some pretty exciting stuff here that I definitely did not expect to see. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below which of these deck lists are your favorite. And if you've tried any of them, let me know how they play. A lot of these are on the weirder side. So it is me kind of figuring stuff out. So if I get something wrong and you know more about this list than I do, please let me know. Thank you as always to my amazing patrons on Patreon whose support helps you make lots of cool videos like this regularly for you. And all that being said, let's go ahead and hop into it. Use the link in the description below to download Whatnot and you'll get $15 to use to buy magic singles, sealed product, get anything that you want really. There's no limits. You just get $15 on the account for free just for signing up. Use the link in the description below. Give Whatnot a try. First up, we're taking a look at Mono Red and that is with Heartless Hidetsugu. So Heartless Hidetsugu is five mana, three red red, four three, tap. Heartless Hidetsugu deals damage to each player equal to half that player's life total rounded down. I've actually played against a Heartless Hidetsugu player a good bit, so I do have some, some experience with this. You can build it with combos that double the damage that you deal. And so if you're at um, like an odd number, like let's say you're at 31 life and everyone else is 30 or something. If you double the damage, yours will be rounded down. So you will still only take 30 and everybody else would die. So you can combo with that and just get people dead very, very, very quickly. You can also combo with giving it lifelink so that you can deal the full damage of everyone's life total to all of them while at the same time you gain the life dealt by Heartless Hidetsugu so that you really don't take any damage and you just gain a million life and everybody either dies or takes half their life total, depending on if you have a combo piece or not and then also you can kind of just group slug it out really pressure life totals make nozzes and necros really ineffective and just put the beat down onto people so we see chandra awaken inferno pretty good modes with well can't be countered is a pretty good ability on a planeswalker you can give an emblem to each opponent where they take one in their upkeep also as the minus three you can deal three to each non-elemental this will kill artless hidetsugu but this is an uncounterable board wipe that kills most of what's played in CDH. Creatures, we're gonna have some stapley stuff, right? Your dock sides, goblin engineers, pretty common in these sort of red shells, the emperor recruiters, treasonous ogre makes a lot of sense here. That's it though, really, in regards to like true staples. We do see reckless fireweaver show up in some other red combo decks. So here we got generator servant to help get down our commander and give it haste, harsh mentor, so lots of damaging kind of overtime effects, right? So we got Harsh Mentor dealing damage, Soul Fiend, which will double non-combat damage. God dang it. Neheb, which will give us red mana when our opponents take damage. Urabrask gets rid of blockers, you know, makes it a lot harder to develop chump blockers at least and gives all your creatures haste. Uh, Ancient Copper Dragon, we're just making mana. Fiendish Duo is a damage doubler. Goblin Goliath is going to double damage in one instance at least. And then we have like these sort of big artifact punisher effects hellkite tyrant taking everybody's stuff and you can win with it potentially and then cavern horde dragon which gets in flying trample haste pretty hot uh gets cheaper if somebody has a lot of artifacts and then you can make a bunch of treasure tokens off of them as well and then platinum angel hey we can't die and then we do have a uh, little synergy stuff like foundry inspector to make our artifacts you were probably gonna run a lot of those and then tracks the skitter fang which at the beginning of combat you can essentially use it to just give hidetsugu lifelink sorceries not too many Rolling Earthquake as a board wipe, Vandal Blast to get rid of artifacts, Crackle with power. If we can get like some big mana stuff, we can go crazy. Like if we do get to activate Hidetsugu with an Aheb in play, we can probably finish everybody else off with Crackle with power. J Will is just a banger to get out man mana and lots of like, you know, another board wipe and chain reaction. Last was act two. I don't know if I would call world fire a board wipe. It is that, but it's a way to get people dead, especially good in combination with like the Chandra emblem you give everybody. Isengard Unleash triples damage. Half your life total, triple. Pretty hot and has flashback. And then Reckless Endeavor, pretty fun little one. Seven mana, you get to roll 2d12. You can board wipe with one of the choices and that much damage and then make treasures equal to the other. An instance, very slim. No red blast, we're not dealing with it. Deflecting SWAT and then Tempt with Mayhem, which basically lets you copy an instant or sorcery and then all your opponents get the options to do it so that they can like, and then you get an extra for each one. So like I copy your whatever source of plow shares and then everyone else who wants to copy it, I get another copy of it for that. And it can work better with like Demonic Tutor. You know, I can, the whole table is probably going to want a Demonic Tutor. It's a little spooky to give the whole table a Demonic Tutor, but you get a whole Whole lot of demonic tutors especially if you're going up next in turn order you know it can be some tricky stuff you can do with it so artifacts of course we're gonna have lots of ways to make mana your fast mana stuff all that good stuff fast mana stuff we've got lifelink enablers like 
Shadow Spear, Basilisk Caller, Haste Enablers like Lightning Greaves. We can double up on, I mean, they're not really a Haste Enabler, but Mage Right Stone will let us untap our commander, refire it. Swiftfoot Boots is giving it haste. Stronic Resonator will let us copy it, so kind of similar effect. The keys, which are just kind of more popular in these sort of artifact heavy builds, we see them a lot in like the Japanese meta. And we do have so many different artifacts and pretty good stuff to tap and untap, right? Radic Ori, Scepter, the Golden Throne, Throne of Eldraine, like really big mana rocks that can get us moving. Mystic Forge really lines up incredibly well with our entire deck. We can get through our whole deck by um, using the Foundry Inspector to cost reduce and then Mystic Forge plus Sensei's Top, which will let us cast the top for free, tap, draw a card, cast the top for free, tap, draw a card and get our entire deck in our hand. Again, other haste enablers, ability copiers, life link enablers which it's a lot of the similar effects and a lot of redundancy and then just some sort of utility mixed in with some of them we can give it an effect which is pretty hot that'll get people dead really really quick i don't know how you do it and not kill yourself with the infect you have to have platinum angel in play i think yeah really interesting little bit of stuff here mirror works get more copies of our artifacts especially that can be like mana positive with some of these big ones we got really cool stuff and then i'm not so sure on the lattice making everything an artifact it's probably something there i mean you can vandal blast your opponent's boards you supercharge your dock side but also everyone else's there's no karn for the karn lock so not exactly sure the best way to do use it ward of bones is really interesting i've never seen this card six mana each opponent who controls more creatures than you can't play creatures same is true for artifacts and enchantments and lands so you can like shut out people's stuff if they already have anything if they, if they have more than you on any of the card type they don't get anymore pretty sick and then enchantments we got some punisher style effects we got the roiling vortex take five when you cast the free spell adds up real real fast blood moon to stop you know people from having spells to cast really no no, no mana here boy mechanized warfare increases damage dealt mana barbs you play a land take damage get wrecked and then pyrohemia is like the red pestilence pay one deal one damage to each creature and each player and then if there's no creatures at the end of turn you have to sack it and then 23 lands very low on the land count not too many crazy utility slots reign of glory makes a ton of sense in this deck with our commander all the bandalord same thing giving it haste and then witch's clinic too give it lifelink off of a land duncan citadel is kind of awkward it, it doesn't seem like it's exactly worth it i'm not really sure on that one and then nykthos probably make a decent amount of mana and then glacial chasm if we have a damage doubler we don't take damage so boop commander can just kill everybody really cool list next we're looking at token time with braylon the haymaker this one you guys are probably familiar with this is a newer one that i haven't got to cover yet it is naya has tap two untapped tokens you control add one mana of any color Tap three untapped tokens you control, draw a card, and then tap four untapped tokens you control, put three plus one plus one counters on Balin, and then it gains trample until end of turn. So I think the two modes are gonna be some of the best stuff that we do, but we'll we'll see what we got. I haven't looked at one of these lists yet. Evasion Good Tutor, Vivian, so we're probably doing like the kiki sort of stuff that you see and usually Naya colors with like or the pod kind of game plan. We see a bazillion mana dorks. Ocelot Pride. Yo, it makes tokens. I mean, that's actually just good. Yeah, Ocelot Pride just seems good in this deck. Racky P, Sylvan, Basking Brood Scale. I know that has some combo stuff and it makes tokens. So you put a counter on something, you make a token. This puts counters on itself and makes tokens. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if we can get some of that. Ooh, Charismatic Conqueror. That makes tokens so freaking fast. That's insane. I'm kind of I'm kind of seeing the vision already. This actually seems really fun. Uh, I kind of memed on this deck, but it at least seems fun. Collector Oof. We are probably going to have some Dockside combos, but you know, sometimes you need the Oof. You don't always have to deploy both. There might be some tension sometimes, but whatever. Little hate pieces like Dranith, Dahlia, Archon of Emeria. So we are going in for actual stacks pieces like hardcore rule of laws we'll see how many farmer cotton when it enters you make x11 halfling creature tokens and x food tokens so you can make a whole bunch of tokens spending one mana to get you two tokens for, for every mana you put in x here is probably pretty good jagged rabbit similar deal when it attack but though it's when it attacks you create tokens equal to its power and it enters with extra power equal to the x mana that you cost that's part of the ravenous keyword that is not written out here even manglehorn lots of stuff you'd expect in like a deck like rocco or some other nihilist lots of good utility stuff rosy cotton is going to make his food tokens and then when you create a token you put a counter on it so we can do that with like brat basking brood scale right put a counter on it make a token make a token put a counter on it that probably goes crazy scurry oak we're doing it yo arasta and cdh oh my god okay guys we are so back okay that's hot all right well we're making tokens right so we got a meal we can do a meal dock side stuff how do we win with a meal dock side we draw our deck yeah that works pretty good and then we have the whole felidar kiki line that we can do felidar karma guide kiki jiki go get the stuff kill the thing blah 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 pod works with pod and vivian i've explained this in a bunch of videos so i'm not gonna explain it here but you can work your way up to a kiki jiki win with copying infinite felidar guardians and then seed more muse 
Not something you usually see in these kind of decks, but we do have an odd little engine in the zone that works really well with untapping a bunch. Altar of Bone, this is the coolest deck ever. Okay, so we got Tutors, Shatter Skull Smashing, which is just a fine include. Probably good enough. Three color deck, it's a little tight. And then Altar of Bone. Additional cost, sack a creature, search library for a creature, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. So it's basically like a diabolic intent version of Eladomri's Call. We've got the actual Eladomri's Call itself. And then nothing surprising really at all in the instance. Two Blast, we're on the Quick Reflexes, Path, Swords, Cord, Silence, plenty of stuff you expect to see. Artifacts, incredibly slim artifact package. This is unbelievable. Petal, Null Rod, Cloudstone, that's it. No Crypt, J oh, Jayla's pretty bad in this deck. No Crypt, nothing. No chrome mocks, whatever. We're just no. We don't. We don't believe in artifacts. Okay, if you're gonna believe in something, you know, I guess you really believe in it. And then enchantments. So we do have just straight up rule of law, and then deafening silence, which is probably fantastic in this deck. Blind obedience, stony silence. So yeah, really shutting people down. Crypto with right. We're making lots of creature tokens, presumably. So make a lot of mana. Tithe makes tokens. Sylvan library is a decent enough card. Touch is pretty good. Twenty eight lands. We got the cradle, which probably goes bonkers. E zone. No Talon Gates. I really expect to see it in most Crop Rot decks at this point. It's really, really, really good. And then Cavern. What are we naming? Rabbit? Warrior? It's probably Warrior. There's got to be more Warriors than there are Rabbits. We only have two Rabbits. And he's a Warrior too. Okay, so we definitely name Warrior. Or whatever we need to get through. But yeah, really cool deck. I like some of the synergies here. Getting to run cards like Ocelot, Pride, and Charismatic Conqueror. This deck seems like a lot of fun. Oh, an Academy Manufacturer. I, I missed that one. We could just go so insane with some of these food generators. It's really cool to get to see weird cards like Arasta get to show up here that normally would not show up in any deck whatsoever not even many casual decks so I love this card I always want to play it in like all my dumb casual decks but yeah that's sick I love to see that but yeah lots of combos to get infinite tokens and then just draw our deck win with whatever Kiki combo big finale however we want to do it now we got a cool little combo of Francisco Ishai Ishai pretty well known for its partner deck with Jessica which has been decently popular over time not really so much now then we got Francisco, the most overhyped commander in the history of the universe. It enables some combos with like Walking Ballista shenanigans, Soul Cauldron, you can do stuff with it, explore combos, but has ultimately, you know, it came out to lots of acclaim and has ultimately just kind of fallen completely out of favor. It not having any power itself, pretty awkward. It doesn't really even have text on it unless you're doing some other thing. It's pretty, again, awkward. But this combination is kind of hot. You get access to cool stuff here. Let's see what we're doing. And we got Teferi, so maybe doing Teferi Kitten, we'll see. And then Karn. Fairy Kitten doesn't line very well with either Swan Cannonist, which is here. Actually, I guess it does, because you're only casting artifact spells. They're, they're ahead of me on this one. They're, they're way smarter than me. We see a, a kind of grindy looking Esper Shell. We got the Ballista, which we know about being able to combo with, with the Soul Cauldron, and where we can put a counter on Francisco and keep hitting and exploring. But we also have to like not have a land on the top, which is absolutely insane that people were building their deck around a three card combo that doesn't even work all the time. So then good cards like Esper, M Mockingbird, kind of slowed, you know, kind of asymmetrical hate pieces like Dauntless, Dranith, Dothy, presumably in our deck, either Sworn is close to asymmetrical. We'll see. Lavinia, as long as you don't get got with it. And yeah, stuff like Gilded Drake, which you don't often see in the Esper shells, usually more in like the blue green decks. Fimage itself, no Metamorph here. So running Fimage and Mockingbird as a clones. Valley Floodcaller, love to see it. And then Kitten, so we do have the Kitten to Fairy line, Talion. Looks pretty good. Looks on the, uh, you know, mid range of your side, which makes sense with these. We're going to maybe develop an Ishai, beat people to death. Karn, get, you know, get down an early Karn, get people not being able to do their Dockside shenanigans. Sorceries, Imp Seal DT, no Diabolic Intent. We do have the Transmute, presumably for our Cauldron, but we'll see. Sevrak, Windfall. And then two that stand out, Jolted Awake, which I have covered a little bit before. It's kind of like an energy unearth. So if we get the Soul Cauldron in the graveyard, we can Jolted Away, bring it back. Uh, and then final parting, which is five mana, search for two cards, put one in your hand, the other into your graveyard, shuffle. That works perfectly with that combo. Uh, maybe some other stuff we can symbol, but we can put Ballista in the graveyard, Soul Cauldron in the hand. Pretty nice. Instance, we're on the offer, consult, we're on Limdul's Vault as a tutor effect, no ad nauseum, uh, vamp, enlightened, into the flood maw, Luster Swan Song. We're not on strict serenade, any of that stuff. You see Muddle and like, like this is really built kind of like a Tivit list for the most part. And you, that's what you see that there because their one card win con is two mana. This it's a three card. It's like a two card combo plus your commander. Plus it doesn't always work. I mean, Muddle does have a decent amount of targets. I'm not really sure how good it is in, in a three color deck with a less deterministic two mana win con. And then the interaction you expect to see intuition works great in this deck. There's the Cauldron, Vexing Bobble. We are on the one ring and we're on the Sensei's top. 
Doesn't look like we have any combos with it, but just running it. And then enchantment's a good bit. Ooh, ho ho. Combat research. It gives our Francisco text. It's amazing. It's one mana when it does come in damage to a player, draw a card, and then it, it gives it, since it's legendary, it'll give it plus one, plus one, and ward one. So it'll be a one, three, hit somebody, explore, and draw a card. And then we got Mystic Ristic, Blind Obedience. A little surprised to see Necropotence. It's not, I mean, I think more decks should play Necro. Like, even if you're not, if you're not a Nas deck, there's like Necro is just one of the best cards in our format. Um, this list is not on Born Upon a Win, but it is on the Valley Floodcaller, which is really good. I think you should just run Necro in a black deck. If you can cast Dark Ritual, you should probably cast Necro. And then lands, we're on the Cavern. Notably, we didn't have like a lot of pirates, so it's not like a Cavern on Pirate deck that's running like Spectral Sailor or whatever, like a Malcolm deck. Anamos here. We've got the Urza Saga. I feel like they just looked at a Tivit list with a star. <laughs> I don't know. I was just not that. I mean, Saga to get Bobble is pretty hot. Top is whatever. Mana Vault. It's not like we're like powering out like Jeweled Lotus with Saga like the Tivit's gonna do. I'm not really sure. Um, relatively low land count, 26. A lot of, a lot of the mid-ranger Esper decks get like 28, 29. But yeah, cool list with some different ways to approach wins. You can just do raw Thoracle Console. You can do the Fairy Kitten, draw your entire deck. You can do all kinds of good nonsense like that. Pretty cool approach. And you get to run two like kind of fan favorite commanders. Like I think if you really like one or both of these commanders, this could just be a really fun deck for you to try out. Then we got Give Cap. Now, if I call this guy Gex, it's not that I can't read. It's because I'm thinking of the little lizard protagonist from like the PS1, PS2 platformer games. So Give is black red. He has Ward Pay to Life. Other creatures you control enter with an additional plus one plus one counter on them for each opponent who lost life this turn. And whenever you cast a lizard spell, he deals one damage to target opponent. The main bit of text that we care about is this little middle one, where as long as we deal one damage to any opponent, your creatures will enter with a plus one plus one counter on them until end of turn. So what does that work well with? It works really well with persist creatures because they would enter with a minus one minus one counter. They won't. So lesser master core comes back and murderous red cap comes back. Gets you dead. So we can, with a sacrifice effect like Viscera Seer and probably more that we'll get to, we deal damage while Gev is out. We can cast a Persist creature and then continually sacrifice it over and over and over and over. And it will continually come back and we'll get whatever effect we get. We can either kill them with Murderous Red Cap. We can pay a life and get a treasure token as we go to start netting a bunch of mana. If we're on like one of the altar effects, we can net a whole bunch of mana or infinite mana and get people dead or whatever, do something with it. And then any death triggers, whatever we can get along the way, we can get them done. So we're on Ballista. Probably got some shenanigans we can do with that, right? Goblin, Welder, and Engineer. So good artifact combo stuff. And we're probably like a decent Entomb deck anyways. Maybe we're, we're leaning into that direction. A Seer as a Sack Outlet. Agate Instigator, which is a cool one, which is just a pinger. So we are kind of leaning into the pinging strategy. And you can see that kind of with Obnix in the 99. Mayhem Devil is just a good value piece. But yeah, you can see what we're going with uh getting people pinged because we also like our creatures will enter much bigger too so that is relevant bowmasters dual casters are probably on some combos with that and procreators is pretty good oppo is a little on the mid-rangey side of these sort of decks we'll you know and then ruthless can we go infinite with this probably we can kill our dock side and get infinite treasures we can get infinite ballista we can pump into that and get people dead i'm starting to see the vision any lizards we can cast over and over <laughs> i don't see one well, I see one lizard, but I don't see a way to like really easily cast it over and over. Sorceries, kind of good stuffy for Rakdos. Bunch of tutors, reanimate, kind of expect it here. Lively Dirge plays into a similar space. We could set up one of our like sack outlet and then a thing to sacrifice, you know? Not so much with Murderous Red Cap. I think that's too much mana, but like lesser Master Core. Or if we already have the sack outlet, we could just use Lively Dirge to put Master Core into play. Whatever. Then the tutors, Twin Flame and Molten Duplication for comboing. One wheel, Day loses the board wipe of choice. P-Graps, J-Will, Beseech. You should expect to see these in Rakdos decks. These are just really powerful cards. Instance, Tutors. We are a Nas deck. First day of class is another way without using our commander that we can make sure all our creatures enter with a plus one plus one counter until end of turn to do our persist combos. Cards you just kind of see in these sort of low color red shells pop up, like Return the Favor. Ghost Fire Slice is an option. It's not the most popular, but I'm seeing more and more of it recently. Rollick, Saw in Half, the combo with Dual Caster and also just a pretty good card. So artifacts, we just have Altar of Dimension. No Phyrexian Altar, no Ashnod's Altar. We'll see if we have like a Goblin Bombardment when we get lower. But we got the LED, so maybe a Breach deck. Grinding Station, so definitely a Breach deck. Defense Grid, we're doing Cloudstone Loops. Okay, go Infinite with Dockside. Curse Mirror, just pretty good clone in these colors and just good card. And then we are Citadel deck. We do have the Magda, which I don't think I pointed out, but there it is. Cheating a little bit in our enchantments, we do have the Breach, the Goblin Bombardment, which is an easy, very easy way for us to win with our Persist Combos. 
and then Cthonia Nightmare to get some loops going, get some infinite mana, maybe get everybody dead also with some of the Persist stuff. I don't know. And then Rocks, Defense Grid, good stuff here. And then 26 lands. We're on the Mount Doom. Raucous Theater, love to see it. And then we're even on the Talon Gates here. Yeah. You're starting to see Talon Gates pop up even in the non crop rot color decks. It's just good to be able to make your land drop and phase out a Dranith and then combo off with your commander. That's and, or your breach, whatever. That's just really, really, really strong. And E Zone too. We're not a Necro deck. We're just, hey, something opens up. We we got a window. Take advantage of it. Crack that E Zone. Montsinger. We dealing under the table with this one. Okay. I have no idea what to expect here. So we got Campbell, Profiteering Mare, one white black whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your opponent's control for each of them create a tap token that's a copy of it this ability triggers only once each turn that is a lot of restrictions <laughs> and then whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control each opponent loses one life and you gain one life okay so we can generate a little bit of value and we can loop and get people dead with token stuff okay or pressure life totals i guess we'll see so we got the corn pretty popular in these decks so far hevish zot which is crazy <laughs> In the 99, we got Tevish Zot, so he can make two tokens, pretty good. You can plus him, sacrifice stuff to draw cards, and then the minus 10 is still pretty good. Like, he, Tevish is just a good card. He doesn't have the, like, minus 10 put himself back into play thing because he's not your commander, but I guess he put Campbell into play, potentially. Just a pretty good value engine. You're in colors that are struggling a lot, right? Orzov, not really known for having many strengths in CDH right now, so we'll take what we can get, and we'll see what we're working with. Lots of more tokening stuff. I didn't realize I'd pick two hardcore token decks, but here we are. And a lot of walking ballista decks. So another Ocelot Pride player. We got the Saris in there. Okay, putting pressure on people. Dauntless, Charismatic Conqueror, getting people beat up. Elias Ilkor, when another creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life. When another creature you control dies, each one loses a life. So if we're doing any of that looping stuff, we can kill people. Same with Marionette Apprentice, which is like a blood artist effect that also comes with a body. Grand Bonsher, Lotho, another Archon deck. Here we got the Boromir, which has not been popular recently. But again, we are in Orzov color, so we're doing what we can. Delny, lots of things that are triggering off this, like the Timna in our 99 here. Sedgemore Witch, let's go. Mirkwood Bats, oh my god, this deck is crazy. So we got Heliod to combo with Ballista. I'm all over the place, but this is just too much. Sedgemore Witch is whenever you cast it or copy an instant or sorcery spell, you make a pest. That's a token. That's a creature. And when it dies, you gain a life. We're, we're making stuff. We're, we're, we're doing things and making stuff. That's what we do here. Drawn and Linvala, a hate piece that was kind of showing up in some lists when it came out, but triple pips, not a lot of decks in these colors that are looking to play that game plan, but can be very strong. Ratadrabic of Urborg. Other zombies you control Vigilance. When another legendary creature you control dies, you make a token that's a copy of it, and it's a zombie. And it's not legendary. <laughs> so it works as a pretty good little, like, kind of value piece to keep stuff around. We can kind of aggressively trade in with some of our creatures. If something just kind of gets picked off by, like, a Bowmasters or whatever, and it's a legend. Like, if somebody Bowmasters our Timna, well, we get the Timna back, it's fine. Notably with that, you will still get the draw because Timna doesn't care about seeing the thing. Timna just needs to be there at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, so that's kind of cool. And then we got Abdel Adrian, so we are going to be Abdel Adrian looping, and that is a perfect addition to this because that just wins us the game. If you have our commander in play, we're going to make tokens with Abdel, and so if we Abdel animate dead, loop, get infinite tokens, we'll get everybody dead. Infinitely dead. Shielded, pressuring life total, solitude, just pretty good card Nors off, you know, pit, use the pitch spells that you can, right? You got you got to do what you can. And then Silver Quill Lecturer, which is awesome. Creature spells you cast have demonstrate and when you cast. So that means when you cast the uh, creature, you can copy it and an opponent gets to as well. So a lot of these other people aren't necessarily going to want like Archon of Emeria hurt will hurt you a little bit, but you getting two Archons and an opponent getting one. That's pretty good because they have to copy it also. Uh, they just do. So you get to put like three Archon of Amiris in the play. That's so sick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you gotta love that. Just like any of the hate pieces that like you just don't really care about. Just just do it. You just, or just lock the game out into an infinite loop of Charismatic Conquerors. Be careful with that because you can very easily get into an infinite loop if nobody can stop that. Getting a bunch of Ocelot Prize. Oh yeah, this is fun. I like this. That's a cool one. Sorceries run the Chain of Smog, which we can use with Sedgemore Witch to combo off if we got our commander in play. I love the creativity. Imp Seal, Reanimate, DT, Prayers of Grass, Daily. There's nothing too exciting here. The rest of the sorceries, though. Instance, we got the Orm's Chant, which you should have in these colors. Fell the Profane, free include. We're not an Oz deck. You should run, like, all the MDFCs if they make any sense, really. Swords, Tainted Pack, on Half, Entomb, good stuff. Artifacts, we are on the One Ring. Wish Claw, we're on the Soul Cauldron. Uh, anything super wild with it. I mean, we do have Ballista Soul Cauldron. I don't know we can do too much with that. I mean, it's just a good card, though. 
enchantment. So stuff to get, you know, Blood Chief is engine. Put some pressure on life totals. I love the engines of choice here. Tithe, of course. Deafening Silence. It makes sense for an Archon deck. You should probably be a Deafening Silence deck. Animate Dead for our combos. Body Mutant slowing people down. Necromancy can also combo with Abdel. Black Market Connections. Pretty good. Makes tokens. Does all the stuff you want, really. And then Trouble Impairs. Just a really good draw engine. And then we're on 27 lands with our MDFCs. Really going deep to have a Tainted Pack mana base. We've got the Surveil Land, Saga, Igonjo, which is just pretty nice. Takanuma, Cavern of Souls. Pretty good. Yeah, very different death and taxes, I guess, list in CDH. If you want to play Orzov, this is a pretty cool looking way to do it. I mean, getting to do Mirkwood back and Silver Quill Lecturer, like, I mean, it looks slow. If you're in, if you're in a Rogsai meta, I don't know. I mean, you just hard mull for that deafening silence, I guess, and pray it resolves, but this is cool. This is definitely going to be like somebody's favorite deck, I feel like. It, it just looks so like it's a ton of fun. Then we got Sithis Storm. Sith is not as uncommon as some of these other commanders, but it's in a color combo I very rarely get to cover. And it has a unique tension among Selesnya decks because it is green, white, and pushes you to play enchantments. And usually that would mean playing lots of hate pieces. But Sithis doesn't want rule of laws because it really is like a storm deck. It wants you to keep casting spells to draw cards. So it pushes you in a unique direction for Selesnya, which I thought always thought was kind of cool. All right, so another Ballista deck. I mean, it makes sense, but man, we were covering a lot of Walking Ballista. Walking Ballista is toxic crazy right now. Give the odd to combo with that. So we've got kind of good stuffy stuff for Celestian, which is awkward to say, but, you know, Shepard, all seed is an enchantment, and it also can protect our stuff. Esper Sentinel, Destiny Spinner, you expect to see. Devoted Druid can combo with our Swift Reconfiguration. Doorkeeper Thrill is a nice little hate piece. Same with Dranith. Haven Interrupter is a good bit of interaction in these colors that we've got access to now. Same with like Solitude. Value-y, good, you know, good stuff like Recruiter, Ranger Captain. Ranger of Eos, which gets two one drops. Verdurin Enchantress. And then a Go Argothian Enchantress. Shigeki, pretty cool little card. Lets you buy back some stuff as well as like kind of generating a little bit of value. And then Seed Cradle Witch, which is cool. So Seed Cradle Witch is, you can spend four mana to untap a creature, two green, white. And then that can go infinite with like Sanctum Weaver which can tap for much more than that and generate you infinite mana. Sionia seems a little goofy, to be honest. It's three mana. When it enters, you look at the top seven, you can get an aura and put it in your hand. And then when an aura becomes attached to a creature, you make a 1-1. One, one. Maybe there's a combo there with it that I don't know about. And Springheart Nantuko is just pretty good. Also is an enchantment creature. Can get us multiple of really powerful stuff. Sorcery is just the one Winds of Abandon, which is a really strong board wipe. Instance, Angel's Grace, you're not winning now unless you Final Fortune and then win anyways. Nature's Claim, Path Sword, Dildarmus Call Reprieve. Fairly well what you would expect in Instance. We don't have like quick reflexes here. Artifacts, not very many. We've got Crypt, Diamond, Lotus Petal, Chromox, Cloudstone Curio, which works with enchantments. We can we can do things with that. And then Aether Flux Reservoir, which if we're storming, that can be a nice clean way to kill people towards the end. Notably, we were not on a Collector Oof. And we're also not on Null Rod, but we're probably going to be on Stony Silence. 28 enchantments. We're not going to go through all these. Some of them make mana. Some of them give haste. Some of them give lands. Some of them give lands to hand. We've got card selection. We got removal. We got combo pieces. We have whatever this thing does. Uh, spend a white and you, you give it protection and you can return it to hand. Hey, you can keep casting that. It's kind of good, actually. We got Whip Silk, which can give a, another, basically just put it to hand. Way to keep recasting enchantments over and over. Removal stuff like Seal of Cleansing. There's that Stony Sounds we expected. Survival of the Fittest to help us find good stuff. Nature Shows in which can pop off untapping a creature. It's kind of insane. Insano, very specific text, especially in like the one printing it's had ever. Reprint this card so it's legible, please. Aura Shards, which is an obnoxious magic card that you think is goofy and doesn't matter. And then when it comes down, you just can't do anything anymore. Enchantress's Presence, another Enchantress effect, of course. Titania Song, turns off artifacts, turns them into creatures that don't have effects shielded by faith gives indestructible and when it enters when a creature enters you can attach shielded by faith to that creature out of time a very powerful wipe is going to hit your own stuff can be really awkward when you have your own commander in play but it's pretty strong and the gauntlets of light is another way we can combo with the sanctum weaver lands 27 anything super cute i mean we're certainly on cradle and sarah sanctum right yeah we're two of the you know one of the only decks that's going to play that card and then Hall of Heal Generosity get us back some stuff. Some basics, not a too greedy mana base. Nectos can make us a bunch of mana because we're kind of a big board state deck. Zerted Temple can go off with our Cradle or our Sarasang. Can we potentially try Nectos? But yeah, ah, my nose is so itchy. But yeah, nothing too crazy in this, but I did want to highlight just a Sithis doing well. 
these colors again not the most outrageous deck you've ever seen but again in like the turbo grixis meta or you know tnk sissy stuff like cool to see a deck like sithis show up and show out then we got Aluge, I'm assuming, like Deluge, because it's water stuff. It's a little hard to even tell what this art is. I guess it's the big old thing there. It's a pretty big guy. So Aluge, one blue, blue, blue. Its power and toughness equal to the number of islands you control. Whenever it enters or attacks, put a flood counter on target land. It's an island addition to its other types, as long as it has a flood counter on it. And then the first instant or sorcery spell you cast each turn costs blue or one generic less to cast for each land you control with a flood counter on it. It is very uncommon to have a card discount the actual mana pips in a cost. Often it's the mana pips that really eat you up when you run like a card like Baral or something, right? That make cards cost one less. A lot of the best cards don't have generic in their cost, especially a lot of the best instants and sorceries. They're one blue, whatever. This actually getting rid of blue pips from those cards in a mono blue deck, I could see that being really, really good. So let's see what we're doing with it. So we got a good selection of Planeswalkers here, another Karn deck, Jace, back up for like a thoracle looks like we are going to try to draw our deck somehow or mill ourselves out and then narset just pretty powerful very strong with windfall twister days undoing days undoing that's the right card okay and it is in the deck she kind of wins the game if you do that creatures polywog prodigy good value engine first of those we've seen today thoracle storm drake no gilded drake chrome host seed shark is going to make us little dudes and artifacts we don't necessarily care that much about that with our commander curious what we're going to do with all that Harbinger of the Seas, we're already mono blue. Frick it, dog. Archmage Emeritus gonna draw us cards off of our free spells, hopefully. Kitten's gonna work really well with casting a bunch of free and cheap instants and sorceries. Then two clones here in Metamorph and Spark Double. Pretty rare that that is your clone package sort of of choice, but Spark Double can copy our commander and we can get our instants and sorceries basically like all free if we do that. Tidal Barracuda, the blue Grand Abolisher, kind of. Similar to like Big Teferi, stuff like that. And then Holebreaker Horde, big, powerful, can't necessarily win with our commander but we can probably figure out some way to win anyways with it because it is just that good sorceries so again keep in mind we are reducing cards by a blue or a generic so the turn our commander comes down merchant scroll is one generic mana if it gets to attack immediately or you know whatever when we attack with it every every one of these costs two less that's pretty sick that's pretty hot so merchant scroll is a good tutor days of doing we talked about this it's like a time twister but it ends your turn no actual twister so you know Probably means a more budget-friendly list, something like that, no, non-proxy. Quasi-duplicate, creating a bunch of tokens. Windfall, again, really well, works really well with Narset. If we have a bunch of stuff that is cheaper than all our opponents, getting to refill is pretty nice. And then just stuff that's like pretty good, but costs too much for CDH, right? Like bribery, it's a little on the expensive side. You see it in mono blue decks anyways, but again, if you can bribery for like two or three mana, it's a lot better. Drawn from Dreams, basically like a dig through time. And then a bunch of extra turn effects. Just just the most, just the most of those. Just every one of those things that says turn on it. Even Days Undoing. They probably just searched the word that the, probably just searched the term turn and then put Days Undoing in the deck. I'm kidding. That's not real. Mnemonic Deluge is going to cast something from your graveyard a bazillion times. It's three. But if it's an extra turn effect or expropriate, it might as well be a bazillion. And Enter the Infant is gonna get our entire deck in our hand, except for one card, but we can still win with our deck in our hand plus jace or thassa's oracle instance a whole bunch of them and they cost like zero basically so we're even playing opt zero mana opt is pretty good it's not the best in the world but it's pretty good bluster dispel three steps ahead once you start discounting cards like this they get to be pretty good the fabricate we're going that deep right we are countering artifacts or you know just a stifle archmage's charm it's just stuff you don't normally get to play in, in these kind of deck but like counterspell itself if it's one mana that's already cracked you get the one cost reduction on counterspell it's just better than almost every other counterspell in cdh already and then same with like archmage's charm you get that to one or two it's pretty hot mana drain for zero is insane i'm running stuff like quick study transcendent message which is convoke and then also like you know we can get rid of those pips you guys get the idea whirlwind denial just a card i'm seeing more of just get rid of the stack i don't want it get it out of here you guys paying four you're paying the four for the uh 18 spells on the stack spells and abilities by the way get wrecked Come near. And then, of course, we got another uh, extra turn spell. Can't go without that. Um, artifacts, not a bazillion of them. We got the ring, bunch of mana, lightning greaves that will get our reduction sped up quite a bit. Getting two blue pips off our spells. The turn our commander comes down pretty huge. And then Brotherhood Regalia, quip creature, has ward two and is an assassin. assassin, can't be blocked. And then it only equips for one. So make our commander hard to block and also give it 
Word two. Wow, it took me a while to figure that out. But because notably, like if we jewel Lotus out our commander, it's only gonna, we're only going to have like one island in play, right? So it's not necessarily that safe to just be swinging with this thing if you get it down super early. So it makes sense to like kind of give it a little bit of extra way to get through. And then enchantments. So we got Mystic Remora, Ristic Study, of course. Mirror Maid, starting to see a little bit more play. Just a little bit. Showing up. It's pretty flexible. Trade routes. I don't know. Let's you... So especially... So I don't see a combo with this in the deck. Maybe there is one. If you see one, let me know down below. Uh, but at the very least, I have a handful of spells that are free, right? And then the only things I need to spend my mana on while it's my opponent's turn, presumably if things are going pretty well with my commander, like it, there's nothing to spend my mana on. So... I can spend my mana just, okay, like I'm drawing cards off of Ristic Mystic, whatever, because nobody believes in my mono blue deck. And then just spend one, get a get rid of junk, get a real card, hopefully. That's pretty good. Like you're, you're changing, you're getting yourself a whole bunch of card filtering to be able to dump your mana into because you're not having to actually spend mana that much on spells now. I'm assuming that's the idea behind it. And I think it makes a lot of sense in that regard. If there is some kind of combo we thing around it, I don't, I mean, you don't want to like put flood counters on your lands and then return them to hand like that. And you can replay lands if there's some kind of synergy thing with like a, a playing a land multiple times the same turn or, or at least playing a land, getting it back. I don't know, using it twice. I don't know. We'll see. Not really. There's not really any good utility lands. Ancient Tomb, Urza Saga, Urza's Cave. That's basically just, I mean, there's not even really a good utility thing. Maze of Ith is pretty nice because again, our commander is probably going to be smaller than we expect. So being able to save it from combat, pretty good. Also, Maze of Ith, just if you get it in play in a CDH game, you'll just find it does more things than you expect it will. Reliquary Tower works perfectly in this kind of deck. Fairly simple mana base because we want a lot of islands. Mystic Sanctuary is an island. Busted. Super cool mono blue deck. I would like to see this thing come down and like for a hard kind of control game plan, it looks really sick. Like you need some kind of way to actually make playing control realistic and making all your spells free is definitely a way to do that. So I think it looks pretty fun. Then the last one, what you guys all been waiting for, colorless deck that won a, I think 64, somewhere around 60 player event. Zula Dock Void Gorger, five and a colorless. Colorless spells you cast from your hand with mana value seven or greater have Cascade, Cascade. That means I cast Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I cascade into Ugin the Ineffable. I cascade into Karn the Great Creator. That would be a really weird sequence of all three of my Planeswalkers, but that's just an example that is pretty freaking ridiculous. You can kind of see how wild it can get, although Ugin costs a lot of mana. What if I don't have eight mana after I spend six mana on my commander? You don't have to, guy. Calm down. You can also just cast Sojourner's Companion for zero mana and then cascade into a freaking Devourer of Destiny and a Wandering Archaic. Just go nuts, dude. Go crazy. So... We're going to have stuff to take advantage of all our colorless shenanigans. Foundry Inspector. We're going to run a lot of artifacts. Glaring Flesh Raker. We talked about this card. Cast a colorless spell. That's every spell in this freaking deck. You get a Eldrazi spawn that makes a mana and you deal a damage to somebody. So if you get to set up a loop of spells, you can kill your opponents. And then also just every single thing you cast basically costs one less. But it's really better than that because you get to bank up the mana. Liberator. Again, it's all colorless. They all get flash. Metalworker. Skittering Cicada. You can kind of see the idea on a lot of these effects. Grand Spider is an interesting one. When it enters the battlefield, you and target opponent each create a tap Power Stone token, which is pretty good for you. And then it has seven mana. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from them and put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom. If this card itself doesn't seem especially good, but it is an infinite mana outlet to get you access to every single artifact in your deck and get them into play, which I'm assuming you can win the game with if you set that up. Wondering Archaic is pretty good. Devourer of Destiny. Gives you a, a pregame that's pretty all right. That's a good amount of selection. And then if you get to actually cast it, just body anything on the board, basically. Free affinity stuff. Affinity is going to work out amazingly in this deck. We want to get around paying the cost of our seven mana plus things so that we can double cascade without having to actually really spend much mana. And then we got just big old nonsense bodies and just big effects. Cityscape leveler, blow up a permanent, Kozilek. He does whatever that says. I'm not going to read all of these. There's too many Eldrazi that have like five effects when you cast them. Void Winner, you know. But yeah, a lot of the biggest Eldrazi uh, that are legal. Unban 15 mana, Emrakul, please. Uh, and then Metalwork Colossus, which has a big cost reduction on it, making this like, the I think, probably the biggest thing we can cast without actually having to spend all the mana on it necessarily. And then this being able to cascade into our Cause Elect or our Void Winner or whatever. That's pretty like ridiculous. Sorceries and instants, not very many. I, this is the first time I've looked at these two card types and they've been on the same line before. All is dust, sacks everybody else's permanents, uh, you know, other than their lands and their artifacts or whatever. Kozilek's command, 
it's just pretty good and pretty flexible. You're going to have stuff to reduce this or, you know, we're going to be able to generate lots of colorless. So it's going to be easy to cast this fairly early on for decently sized, you know, X cost in there. But yeah, you can just pump some mana, or like basically spend mana to set up mana for next turn with the spawns, get some card selection and draw a card, exile something, get something from the graveyard. There's just all modes that I expect you'll use if you play this deck. And then Desecrate Reality, seven mana, each opponent, you exile a permanent they control with an even mana value. And then if you spend three colorless when you cast this spell, you can return a permanent card with an odd mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield, which is again, just pretty good value. And then this does not count just creatures. So you cast like an instant for seven. You also get to double cascade. And then here we got the real meat and potatoes of it. We got 42 artifacts. Chalice of the Void. Mana. Candelabra of Taunus. My baby. The maps, the keys. We've talked a lot about these cards. Cursed Totems. We don't have too many activated abilities among our creatures. We did have that. Uh, well, I mean, that turns off our spawns. It's just kind of mid. We don't have that many cards that make them. But that is pretty relevant, I think, to some board states. Turn off our spider could be. Most of the rest of these don't really have too many. I mean, Kozilek does. That'll work. Colossus. That's in the graveyard. That doesn't count metal worker so cursed totem does have a cost but it's definitely going to be better against like the sisses or nadus or kinnons or whatever than it is like hurting you know it'll be it'll probably be worth that disruptor flute card i've just talked about is a pretty good piece of interaction especially if you're in colorless this is like closest thing you get to just a real counter spell or just like a good way to shut something off at instant speed turn off you know make a commander come down much later in the game than players expect just pretty good torpor orb again gonna hit our opponents way more than us Lots of ways to make mana, find cards like card selection. Mirage Mirror, just a flexible card that has all kinds of nonsense. You guys probably know you can do with it. You can do like the Basalt Monolith tricks with Mirage Mirror, make it a copy of something else. We get infinite mana. Um, we have like Rings of Bright Hearth, so we can get infinite mana with Basalt Monolith. Tangle Wire, especially if you get a bunch of Eldrazi down and you Tangle Wire. Any of these big stacks pieces like Trinus, uh, are we on Trinus here? I don't think we are. We're not on it, but something like that. Tangle Wire, whatever. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Power Stone, another Clock of Omens deck, Unwinding Clock. So again, lots of value with our artifacts. One very good with the One Ring. Big stuff again that we can cascade into, right? We can cascade into Might Stone and Weak Stone, blow up a creature when it enters, or draw two cards. Cascade into Camille, and now spells you control can't be countered. And then it also kind of cascades, so it's a little bit smaller. Godfrey Statue, Planar Bridge, just stick a permanent into play. That's a lot of mana. And I don't know, maybe, maybe we can we can cheat that a little bit, but that's, that's a lot of mana. But I mean, that's what we're doing, we're making colorless mana. Chroma's Memorial, that tells you how we're trying to win right here. Flying First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Protection from Red and Black and from Red. Get people dead with those freaking Eldrazi. Go insane. Annihilate Trigger. You have been annihilated. And you can kind of get the idea. World of Phyrexia, amazing thing to get into play. Excalibur, super hot. 12 mana. X less to cast for X is the mana value of Historic Permit you control. That's going to be pretty easy. Our commander costs 6 on its own. Uh, Quick Creature gets plus 10, plus 10. 2 to equip to a Legend. That's pretty sick. Dark Steel Monolith lets us play something for free. You gotta love it. And then the one enchantment, Echoes of Eternity, which doubles our triggers of colorless spells or colorless permanents, other colorless permanents, not Echoes of Eternity. And then when you cast a colorless spell, copy it, you can choose new cop copies for the target. You can get a copy of this thing in play. Like if we Mirage Mirror that, that can be an enchantment, right? Yeah, that goes bonkers. But yeah, this just makes everything we do much, much, much better. And then lands, we get to run every bit of utility that we can think of. We get the Fomori Vaults, the Mistress Factories, Planar Nexus to, because I think we're running the Tron Lands too. Yeah, we get to run the Tron lands and then Planar Nexus immediately turns them on. So like, that's pretty nice. We basically get a bunch of kind of shots at getting an Ancient Tomb. Eldrazi Temple, one on its own. I have Ugin, makes all our Eldrazi, colorless Eldrazi spell cost you less. We just get every bit of utility that you could want. Scorched Ruins at four color. I have not seen this land before. Okay, that's cool. Great Arzus Labyrinth deck, Vesuva. Yeah, we can just do kind of the big mana stuff you see in other formats with like land synergy stuff. And we, you know, we got, we are Highlander, so we can't do quite as crazily with the, all the planar nexuses and draw lands, but we get pretty dang close. So really, really cool take on a deck. Seeing a colorless deck take down an event, just amazing to see, super sick. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Let me know down below which of these decks was your favorite. If you didn't like any of these here, you might just not like having fun. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Uh, lots of stuff to choose from. I kind of want to try that Balin deck that's getting me a little interested in that. Zuladoc, of course, also looks sick, but I am, I'm literally a Rog Sai gamer going from that to seven mana tribal. Seems a little tough. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try it. Let me know down below what you think I should try. But hopefully you enjoyed this. If we get to see more cool experimenting uh, or you see a list that I miss and uh, would like me to cover in, a, in another episode like this, let me know down below. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. And as always, go play CDH. Have a good one, everybody.